guys, the X Men are back. <laughs> <laughs> of, you know that costume didn't fit you, Joe? Yes. Dun, 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 Copyright. It's different now. It's, it's different. It, uh, they slightly updated the song. Let, we'll get there. Uh, I want to say uh, the X-Men are back, baby. X-Men 97 has debuted with the first two episodes you can go watch now. We saw the first three episodes, and I can tell you up front, it is awesome it's back some great storytelling it really doesn't skip a beat from the previous stuff this is a pure nostalgia ride several episodes got me feeling emotions i'm like wow that's pretty good for a 30 minute animation now there are a few problems with it and we'll we'll get to that but i think overall this is a great continuation so i think the the writing strong the characters are appropriate and in fact i think kevin feige said look if we're going to do x-men the animated series there are two requirements before you even get started he said i want all the original actors back and we got to get the song and so they they did that they got all the original actors back uh, to voice there and we were like wait does that sound it's older. been 30 years. <laughs> older, yeah. Some of them don't sound quite as appropriate to the character as they used to. And we'll get into that. But um, And they got the rights to the song. Now, I guess we'll start right away. They changed the song. They changed the intro song slightly. They updated it. No, no, no. You bought the song. You bought the rights. Leave the fucking song alone. It was immaculate. One of Super the top iconic. five intro songs of any animated series maybe the best animated series intro so i don't need you to update it with little guitar here and a little thing here maybe they did it to match the sequence and the you know titles because they switch up the titles a little bit the animations the character names and stuff appear in different orders a little bit new animation to that uh, or whole, all new animation to mm -hmm. that um, so maybe that's why they fell, but just leave the song the same, in the same style, and keep it going. Because that thing is a national treasure. It mm -hmm. is. So, um, I really enjoyed it. And it starts off, I don't know, I'd say the first episode kind of rough as you kind of get into that, that transition. Then, for me, it goes up from there. Uh, you definitely have to get used to some character voices. Yeah. Uh, their voices, they're, they're, they're 97? 30 years? 30 years older than when they originally voiced it. So I, I'd give them a... I'll say the roughest voice, I hate to say it, is Rogue. Oh, I thought you said Wolverine or something. But okay, it, it goes, for different. me it goes Rogue and Wolverine. These are the two voices that take some getting used to. Yes. Well, I was hearing Alex saying, it's not like a pirate. <laughs> Every now and then Wolverine <laughs> is like, pirate. it's piratey. It's like, yeah. oh. I, arr, I just did my pirate. Oh, thank you, by the way, y'all, for yeah. loving my pirate. I uh, appreciate that. Make me feel good. Oh, Joe plays a good pirate in Skull and Bones. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard, I did hear some pirate in, in Wolverine's. But, you know, and same thing with Rogue. She already had kind of like a raspy, very sexy voice. And here you can, you can tell that it has changed over the years. Um, but because these are the original voice actors and because it has been 30 years, I'm, I'm willing to just be like, yeah, I get used to it. You, once you get used to it, you, you ease in there and you're fine. It's a weirdness, but it's never something I'm going to take points away from. No. Right, yeah. So it's just like you, you point it out. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I think it picks up where it left off, and it is actually really engaging. And while and I'm, I'm actually saying it ups the storytelling. If you really watch all five seasons of the original X Men, back. it's been a while. There's some filler in there. Yes. It's rough. The story, the animation's pretty bad. They, they kind of keep you know in one place and then talk over and over, and then every once in a while, then they'll do some action. <laughs> and the storytelling's really played out, road tropey. I mean, this was 30 years ago, and uh, a lot of exposition in the way they talk. Well, uh, they kind of kept that. Initially, they kept that. Oh, the same. episode one's real bad. Yeah. It, so go right ahead and let us know. What did you guys think? Hey. Yeah, you put on the costume. No, no, I was. <laughs> I should have put the whole thing on or made you do it. <laughs> Shit, let's see if it fits. Yeah, I don't think it'll fit. <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, episode one uh, is a little rough, and they do the thing where they're trying. I wish they had just filmed a five-minute 
what you know here's what happened since the last time mm-hmm. thing that was optional that you could watch because yes. there's some awkward moments in the yeah. first one it's like oh hey how are you wolverine the guy that has healing factor and has claws and it was also has good nose and was in love with gene gray how are and how are you it's like oh i'm good you know me i'm just scott summers also known as cyclops and i could do this to go puke it's just like that's how the first half of episode <laughs> one goes they talk. It's pretty and bad. then they stopped doing it because i was worried that everything was gonna oh, it, yeah, yeah. and the it's other like thing is exposition. what's crazy is you know people are only gonna get get to watch episode one and two episode three is so good Ooh, and so i think sexy mommy oh. <laughs> i think people like our our scores are gonna be a little inflated because episode three is a banger like it's really Ooh. it's really good stuff episode In multiple one ways, yeah though. episode two is less or episode one is 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 less good but i i like you know we've gotten used to a real shitty version of cyclops for a long time yeah, Cyclops has been like a, a mopey Kirkland Scout, dad, cheesy ass. Mo- I never. And lie. you like you root you root against the guy, and you're like, you're man, I hope face. Wolverine steals your girl, you milk toke milk, milk, milk toast ass me. bitch. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and then they also made him like short and shit, and you know, it's like, what are you doing? And so it's like this this time he's like Something doing cool wrong. short. No, there's not. But I mean, like, look, come on. <laughs> So like they're doing cool stuff with his powers, like he's using concussive blasts. He's like he's doing he's doing neat things. So I, it's nice to see. So I think that they started off really strong. What this is think, looking Joe? pretty good. This is uh, I'm surprised Disney has put something good out. Yeah, <laughs> it's not over yet. Hey, right now, guys, we get we just gotta get, we give Disney so much shit. They have so rightfully much. So. Obviously, so. They rightfully are, so though. Obviously, they are in charge of everything. But the thing is, there's individual. They have teams. the money to hire good writers. It's, it's Go the ahead. same two producers. It's it's Louis Desposito and then Joe Feige's right. in charge oh. of this and all the other stuff. So it's like, look, you still have the head, yeah. the same two people what, in charge. What I look at at this point is, uh, you know, the showrunners. Yeah, the, the showrunners and. <laughs> Interestingly enough, oh, where'd he go? This showrunner was fired. Oh, why? Uh, apparently, so number one, he was very difficult to work with. Now, I don't put any stock in that because that can be look, Anything. we're gonna treat these we characters heard that about exactly Henry. Henry like Cavill we treated different. them in '97. Yeah. So, I don't put anything in that. Unfortunately, man had an OnlyFans. I don't fucking know why, but uh, and he did some creepy things on the OnlyFans. The the Disney Disney done like that shit. He was advertising. Might have even done private videos for people with some shit out there that maybe Disney just doesn't want to be a part of. He was twenty dollars. Twenty dollars episode and direct the first episode. So he is responsible for the writing, and the writing is really good. And he wrote both of these episodes. Didn't direct them. Uh, The first one was directed by Jake. Second one directed by Chase Conley. Uh, go ahead. But yeah, so far this is pretty good. First one uh, it kind of brings you up to speed, but a little too much. Yeah. But then it starts really going ham, and I fucking love it. I want to see more of this. Hell yeah. We have a fucking success within Disney, mm-hmm. and uh, more so Marvel. Now, this is uh, some granite. This is not MCU canon. They made that clear. This is just continuing the, the franchise from there. And honestly, for children... Uh, children? I was a child at the time. I mean, this is fucking 30 years ago, basically. It was X-Men for the children who had not yet dipped into the comics and read the comics. Because a lot of these storylines yes. from this cartoon were literally comic storylines that were happening at the time. or they were, uh, you know, And then comics went on from the series when the series stopped. And man, this just picks right back up. We even get my favorite, who I put the helmet on there for a second because I wanted to say this is... Sky steals the show. I fucking love Especially Magneto. Joe Ugh. goes. Joe goes. <laughs> what did I say? No. No, not no. that. Uh, it's just Joe uh, no, loves. No. Joe I loves his like, new like, flamboyant suit. I don't no. like his suit. I don't it's, like, it's not good. Yes, he loves like, it. You said, oh, yeah, it, it was I know. the I was comics. Like, Bro, it's directly out of the comics. But again, and he's like, you I know don't there are some bad though. things in the comics. Yeah. Man. That man is so secure, he don't give a fuck. <laughs> Check out my new threads. It's so dumb looking with the M, but it's so dumb. And he's all shown his biceps. And he's like so macho, machismo 90s that I love it. <laughs> I actually like the suit. It's but like I love 80s Magneto, wrestlers. the character. He gives several uh, monologues, gives mm-hmm. several speeches. And every single one yeah. of them is so juicy good. And there's a point in episode two where he can just fuck shit up and he's like i gotta pay respect to my friends and he shows mercy that's like i feel emotion you know and 
That's amazing to like already get some emotion out of me for a 30 year old series uh, that's picked up in, you know, two episodes. I, I really respect it. I think these writers and I think these directors and I think the team behind here were very passionate. Yeah. Whether this direct, whether the, the guy, the showrunner, boo, whatever, did something inappropriate with his OnlyFans or whether Disney's like, yeah. We're it's, just going to use the OnlyFans to get rid of you because you're you're too difficult to work. We'll, we'll bring in somebody else. I am concerned about that. However, it has already been confirmed that there are there is going to be a season two, and the original show creator kind of already helped write the season two. So we're getting at least two good seasons, uh, and then we'll see from there whether uh, things start to change dramatically. But be. I'm actually excited to see where they go with the story. Yeah, yeah. It feels like they're setting up long arcs. There's very interesting character moments, introspective character moments, team dynamic shit, power level stuff. Uh, okay. Now let's get to the animation. So many people gave uh, it shit. And, you know, during the trailer, it looked very low frame, mm -hmm. you know, that, that kind of thing. Very heavy uh, drawn lines. For me, if I set my expectations and I say they're trying to continue the animation style from the 90s, I don't really have a problem with the animation. There's some times where I feel it, it might be lacking in certain spots, but I think this is done on purpose. And honestly, I think some of the dialogue and writing is also done on purpose to stay within that theme of the 90s it does say x-men 97 and so when you're thinking man this is very 90s they even make 90s jokes there was at one point we said N not or so i don't remember what it was something like that <laughs> i was like that's that's 90s. Page me. <laughs> that's 90s as Wait, fuck. <laughs> i like it and so all of that stays on brand and when when they're playing within those limitations uh, i think it works and honestly Go back and rewatch some of those episodes during the massive action sequences. I think this show's animation does super surpass the, the original animation yeah. at times. So um, what did you guys think about the animation? Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, like a, There's a little bit like a little hiccups there for me, but overall, like it did not bother me. I was like, didn't even nitpick at it. Yeah. As, as long as it meets a certain level, like minimum level, I don't give a shit. And yeah, it definitely right. surpassed that minimum level. Yes. There's parts that don't look good straight up. There's parts on this that, that, that just do not look good. The faces don't match. Like mouths are moving when people aren't talking and vice versa. doesn't matter. Cause it's close enough. And like, when th other things are working, you're willing to overlook some of those things, and I do think that those yeah. things are working. Yeah, and uh, you know, in the animation style, especially from Profile, there's one shot of a Cyclops. It comes very from a specific school of drawing. You know, those little comics and stuff they would teach you how to draw. It's very traditional with that those cylinders, and then you draw the little thing. That's kind of how the animation looks. No, no frills, no modernization there, uh, except for maybe some of the uh, projectile effects and things like that. Oh, Jubilee, might... bang. Jubilee. Totally good. <laughs> fucking Jubilee. Still useless. Jubilee 30 is years, back. still fucking useless. Yeah, Jubilee's hilarious. Um, <laughs> she has my powers. Yeah. yeah. She so, just breaks things. Yeah, what did you think of all the characters? I mean, there was... Oh, God. I, I, I hate to even bring this up, but some people were complaining over Morph being... Uh, what is it? Being able to morph between anyone. You know, the, you know, powers. YouTube, they just complain about everything these days oh. and being uh, bisexual or transsexual and being able to morph between. But you just addressed it uh, literally oh. right there. Did y'all find any problems with the morph character? Uh, no. I think morph is a really interesting character because the, the, the show can't have every X-Men character in it. And that's, yeah, it's and I, rough. There's a lot of them. And there's there's so many of them, and there's ones I want to see. And Morph is the perfect opportunity to have Psylocke show up, even though it doesn't make <laughs> sense in the story. <laughs> have some random person that I don't even know, and I have Those to look up on my... with multiple arms. What's her name? Yeah. She looks like Silver Samurai. Samurai. Or Anna Taylor-Joy. I never remember. Uh, Cy Cyclops' little sister. Uh, yeah. like, I don't, all these characters that I have to like look up, she's got the crazy sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah Marvel yeah. Snap, I have her. Yeah, I'm yeah. forgetting her name. So, but like they, they do... Morph is a perfect opportunity for the writers to be like, I really want to include this one. It's like, well, 
doesn't make any sense. They died 30 years ago. It's like, we've got a morph. And mm -hmm. so morph is cool. Morph and if, is a fucking asshole. Oh, yeah. He's a funny love. guy. Is, he is the comedy relief of the series. I like his But character. in like an absolute asshole kind of way. And look, if you're looking for a reason to get upset, morph is a perfect opportunity to feel like a victim today. And cool, you did it. You got mad at something on the internet. But oh. I would recommend you grow the fuck up. Big snowflakes. All right, so we're going into... So overall, I would say if I were to <laughs> combine it into a score for the first three episodes as a premiere score, uh, granted first episode and then it goes up from there, I'll probably average it out to about an 8 out of 10. What, what uh, would you exactly say? That's exactly what I was going to say, an 8. Uh, first episode, I was kind of worried that they were going to fuck up some of my characters that I liked. Gambit. 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 So the first time we... Oh, well, we'll get in, wait, wait, we'll get into it. Okay. All right, well, first time I saw him, I was like, well, don't mess up my guy. Like, yeah. I like Gambit. And it started picking you up. You and Angel love Gambit. He's so cool. He you just... want to throw shit at people? Yeah, exactly. That's, no, it's that's the his, closest power. It's I his woman do. womanizing. And we his did talk cool recently factor. about your uh, use of French. Yeah. Oh god. Well, so what did you get? Wait, eight, eight yes, well? yes, I agree with that. Uh... Uh, it's it, an awkward. We're just uh, we're so gonna you're go individual for us, right for, us, for us premiere, not sure. for them premiere, because yeah, like everyone else is gonna be like they only saw episode one and two. Right. Because without number, factor in three well, and I the score three. goes up. Because without, I, I want you to factor in three. three. Without three, it's much lower than that. Because I honestly, I had a lot well, of issues with what, the first one. Well, tell us what it would be without the third and what it would be. Uh, I think I agree with you. I think I'm I'm towards eight for the first three of them. But okay. it really helps out with it. Like, I'm okay. low seven. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't do that. But, like, episode one was rough. And I was yeah. horrified that that was the level of storytelling we were going to get. Mm -hmm. Because they were afraid to, like, get us caught up. Yeah. Okay, so uh, solid debut. We are going to watch the rest of the episodes, and I think we'll either give you a mid-season. I'll, I'll check to see how many episodes. I think there's 10, so I, we, we're definitely doing a season finale once all of them have come out. Maybe we'll update it with one April 10th, April 17th with a mid-season, so we'll, we'll, we'll catch up there. Okay, so um, uh, let's go into the individu uh, individual reviews. So, episode one, this is the rough one, uh, and spoilers ahead. Uh, episode one is the rough one. You know, you, you, you change the intro song, so that makes pisses me off right Already, from the beginning. Already, I was kind of scared with yeah. that. Then we get Diego, this character Diego. They find him, some mutant uh, haters uh, have some sentinel tech that are beating him up. I, I don't know if I like this Diego character. Granted, I didn't like Jubilee as the audience thing when Same way back man. 30 years ago. I still don't like I Jubilee. Still don't. He's muscle. I still don't like Jubilee. Uh, and then, and then, uh, so that's a little rough. But we get an action scene here that's well done. We reintroduce the characters. However, we all know that we were like oh. the way they were talking is like. I am Cyclops, and I shoot things, yeah. and I just recently have a baby, and I am Storm. The I control just this. Guess what I do? Stop it. Stop wait, it. Yeah. Should we wait for the dialogue? <laughs> Shoot now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you, are you finished? Okay, let's go. I am Storm. My control... The storms. the storms yeah i so, kind of got it <laughs> yeah but so they're talking they're talking in ketchup speak yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, i wish i didn't do that but anyway so uh but there's some good characterization here uh scott he's the way he should be he's boy scout cheesy corny you just ugh. but he's feeling over get receiving the death certificate uh for professor x if you don't remember uh, he's not he's, technically dead. He's gone to space. The Shinarians, or whatever they're called, uh, saved him. His love interest, at least at least Professor X gets a love interest. He has to live out his life somewhere else. Um, and, yeah. And so then, the, and then as the characters start talking, you're like, yeah, everybody's pretty good. Except for, Yarr, except for like, pirate whoa. Wolverine whoa. and an old, older, older rogue. But hey, again, we we pick it out because like last time we watched Lion King the live action, it was still James Earl Jones, and you could tell he wasn't really mm -hmm. in there, and he just like, yeah. and then this is what I wrote, and in. then they go to uh, so Diego eventually they save him. He's like, "What are you gonna kidnap me now? You guys are just as bad." He's just a rich asshole. And, he doesn't really want to be with the X-Men. He also obviously doesn't want to get killed by these mutant hunters. They continue that storyline from the la uh, the last season and eventually leaves. The team shows up at a um, at a club, so like a rave thing here. And Morph is such 
such an asshole. He morphs into Jean Grey and fucking lays into Wolverine. I like this scene. That was a good scene. <laughs> like, I'm Jean Grey and I had a perfect baby with you. Yeah, wa- watch from the sidelines. Like, you it was just like him hard. I was like, God damn, yeah. morph. And Wolverine just takes it like a bitch, just pissed off. <laughs> but anyways, the animation, like I said, it's not the best animation. Like, if they were to do a brand new show, I would be upset with the animation level because it, but they're paying. And I wouldn't be upset. What I mean is it's got a very specific style that's yeah. staying true to the 97. So then uh, we get Jubilee partying, and I hear Alex's eyes rolling in the back when she started partying. But she, I thought, she it, was, shows I thought up. it was fine. I was like, yeah, that's her one thing that she yeah, can do is create sparkles. Okay. It wasted it, so, so much stupid, fucking though. time from an episode that wasn't strong enough so to begin with. <laughs> she dances for five, ten seconds. Okay. It, that's but, like a two minute long dance they do. Be, no. uh, yeah. Well, well, ten seconds. Well, we'll go record but it, and you're going to go gonna go put it at the bottom, what the right time was, because they dance for a long time. No, but, not they dancing, her dance sequence, because uh, uh, no, I mean, other people dance as well. Yeah, but the main point is, like, hey, we're here, these guys are after you, we we're trying to protect you. Time let's to not, dance with she, she connects with this Diego character, yeah. and I think she has a crush on him. Yeah. Oh, she and does. by the end of the episode, I actually was like, okay, I'm... I'm actually interested in this subplot. Of, she's trying to f- find a way to connect with him, to bring him on board, and I, I think their their chemistry eventually works by the end of the episode. Wasn't feeling it here at the start. Henry Gyrick. This is a good villain scene. It's an interrogation scene. We get some good dialogue here. We continue that storyline of a lot of people, I think, have missed the point of the X-Men uh, when the X-Men, you know, are essentially fighting against oppression and prejudice and being different. It's always been it's like a good that, thing. Really, yeah. And, you know, respecting other people, co- cooperating with other people. No, they just had to go and make X-Men political. I don't know why you'd do that. It didn't make any These sense. These people are... They just, Same right. with Superman. But, so that's done right here. It's done really well. And you have this guy who's just... just hates mutants and is doing everything ha 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 taunting them because he did win he shot and killed professor x and took out uh their their leader essentially anyways um then we get a mind invasion scene and again done really well Uh, throwing back to master mold which is the head sentinel the bigger sentinel i had the toys i just remember these toys yeah Yeah. well i mean this is another opportunity where scott for you know for the first time in 20 years isn't a giant fucking bitch yeah and he's just like hey i'm not yeah i mean look the fox really did him dirty and then but so it's like he's sitting there he's leading the team here yeah he's like uh you know professor x wouldn't do all these other things and we we don't have him anymore and then gene just like invades his fucking brain and then, but so we get uh, we get that, and then they go out with the jet, and then the jet gets destroyed by a sentinel. The music ramps up here. I wrote good music, and the team recovers well. They they fucking you know nod at each other. The flyers go and then rescue the the, beast of the, the people who couldn't fly, and then they're just working as a team. They kick ass. That theme song kicks in, and they fight against these damaged sentinels in a junkyard that the humans are trying to re-engage and yeah. do the the. But the team just kicks some ass, well, and it is awesome. What do you think of Scott falling out of an airplane? He's like, I don't need saving, and he just concussion <laughs> blasts <laughs> the ground, and <laughs> yeah, it slows, and hilarious. then he lands on the superhero. I was, I was like, thinking about that. I was like, I li- is someone going to get him? I was like, I like oh, nobody's okay, getting sure, Scott. No. Sure. Well, then, and then they, they let Storm kind of steal the show here, where they're like fighting to a standstill, and then they're like, all right, enough fucking Storm around. Storm is so theatrical. Oh. And, but that's well, she's the so, she's OP as shit. She is. Yeah. She is she could just, suck the air out of your lungs. And just, you're just dead. Cool. Um, <laughs> then I'm waiting for Joe to make the original X-Men joke about Storm and her dialogue. Oh, God. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> If, that, like if, they Storm. if they would have put that line in there, I was like, okay, I give you, you yeah. I give you another no. point just for that. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> it's and I actually I even like how Beast contributes to the fight. He just like rips a fucking Sentinel to pieces, then goes inside. Did He's you like know there's a part of a Sentinel, sentinel where you can yeah, crawl yeah, inside of it and then control the it? And yeah. 
God damn it! I but I'll allow it because oh, it's know. hilarious and he yeah. beats. Otherwise, shit up Beast with doesn't it. do anything. Mm-hmm. No, I mean he's he 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 trips. He's one. He actually picks one off the feet and it stumbles yeah. over. So that is doing something. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is a lot gets done in 30 minutes. And honestly, I feel like sometimes there's more plot here and more satisfying resolutions than in an episode of. Boba Fett or these Star Wars shows that are given That's the same amount saying. of time and, and, and it's not satisfying and That's this was satisfying saying. you get to see the team fighting some old villains and yeah so and that has got a good moral to the stories um, like I said the violence is the cooper. answer Yes, uh, when it comes down to it, your push comes to shove. You know, don't Kill let a, don't kick. let a bully uh, bully you too much. Anyways, so then um, again, I, I I wrote here. Then there, there was a, a slower scene between Jubilee and Diego, and I didn't really like Diego's character, Roberto da Costa. Actually, I think his name is and Jubilee, but. It's a sp- surprising plot line that may work in the future. It seems like there's a budding kind of uh, romance or relationship here. She's yeah, because he's always been afraid of uh, showing his powers because he hates the way he looks. But what is he his finally... powers, Joe? He's sunspot. He's sun. He's sunspot. Go. Yeah. So, mm. and then uh, Magneto shows up, look like he's wearing lipstick. <laughs> I don't know why they draw his lips like this. It doesn't help that he's in his new flamboyant suit that Joe doesn't like. Uh, but he's not in him here. He's uh, all suited up, and he's like, hey, Xavier wrote in his will. He leaves everything to me. And, oh, there's also a plot line of Scott and uh, uh, Jean Grey potentially leaving the team. Yeah, because she, she has baby. She had baby. Um, yeah. And just, like I said. Um, <laughs> granny goodness. That's what I was thinking granny about. Granny goodness. What? Oh, is on DC. Magneto's new costume, Granny Goodness. Well, got it. That, yeah, he, so, what would you? <laughs> tell me I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm very. You know what? You're right. I know you don't like the suit. Neither does Alex. No, I like the suit. No, but like with the big hair That's and the look. terrible. Yeah, Joe, you... send that to me so I can also put it up on in the. <laughs> yeah. All right. What would you give the episode, Joe? Six. Six. Okay. Because uh, this is where average. I think is this what where we see Ga- yes this is where we see Gambit, Gambit and all that. Oh, I was let's afraid. talk about it. the first time we see Gambit. He is wearing the stupidest yeah, fucking outfit up I've ever with, seen. Well, they messed Joe up. They got tweaked, mad. They tweaked up with the intro song. I was like, okay, don't fuck this up. Then I see Gambit with the long ponytail. I was like, he didn't really have man bun with, a, and with the, the crop top going on. I was like, and this isn't is like, like the eighties. Generic rock and then this is like the eighties. He's making beignets with no powdered sugar. That too. I'm like those. Gonna piss off Alex. Well, it's like he's they're not done. It's like, what are you doing? But I, you didn't care I, about his cooking, Joe, but you did care I about did the way he looked. Yeah, yeah but, I did. All right, but quickly he changed his costume and we're like, oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, what did he put the rest of his a, hair? Does not have a very good sense of fashion. Six, six. Um, I liked it a little more. I'm gonna go seven <clears throat> yeah. out of ten. I think I, you know, it's used a lot of it, but I can definitely see it's losing those three points because of the. If you want to ha- if you want to catch people up, just do a previously on. Yes. And in fact, the next episode has a previously on for this episode. So I know you could do the previously yeah. on, and they didn't really do it. So and, and and make sure that the writing is tight. Treat your audience like adults, cause it's thirty years later. You are literally speaking to adults. I don't think this series is going to be a you know pop hit with the kids with the TikTok generation. They're not going to give a fuck. It's for us. And so, you know, within a particular uh, genre and within a particular niche of a niche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. First episode rough. Moving on to uh, episode two. So um, this is we have a carnival and um, in this carnival, there's a, you know, firefighter helping a uh, helpless uh, kid. Uh, Doesn't go so well. Magneto shows up and saves him. Everybody's like, Whoa. Uh, even well, that was a cliffhanger. Do we talk about the cliffhanger at the end? What well, was a cliffhanger? Yeah, we did. Okay. That he right. takes over. Yeah, he yeah, has yeah, the yeah, will. Yeah. Kind of uh, yeah. So he basically yeah. saves people. And the, yes. the beginning of the episode like, focuses on? on Magneto saving people. And then he goes and saves some mutants. He saves Leech. I also have Leech card in, in Marvel Snap. He's uh, like, I remember this guy. Yeah, I remember this guy. And also from the previous cartoons. He yes. was in probably one of the episodes. Um, humans being assholes again. At least one branch of humans who hate, hate yeah. the mutants shows up, try to kill the, these mutants. Magneto's just kicking ass. Mm-hmm. And I love him. And uh, But his suit, uh, the boys don't like. No. <laughs> it's very fanboy, and I, I like it. He's a he's a very uh, 
confident in his he's uh, got the, physique. The Jessica Rabbit. I would Rabbit. show it off too, man. Gloves. Gloves. They go all the way up. I got a fat ass gut, but Joe, if I was, if I had a six pack, I'd be fighting. Look, look, you would wear the gloves look, up to here. I, I'm pretty yeah, fit. Yeah, let's I'm see what fit, they look like. But I, I want to see what they look like. I'm pretty fit, but I'm not gonna wear that. I'm yeah. not gonna wear that. <laughs> Uh, don't say that, Joe. Don't I, put that in my mind. Well, next, that's fine. Next I'll, review. <laughs> is Magneto getting paid for that? Next, yeah, <laughs> is right. he getting paid for that? <laughs> He's not. So now we have, um, but I do want to talk about the suit because this was created by legendary artist uh, John uh, Ro Romita Jr. Magneto first wore it in 1985. Ooh. Uncanny X-Men 200. Number two. Yeah, and they stopped using it. Do you? Can you guess yeah. why? Yeah, because uh, mm -hmm. uh, Alex hated it. Yeah. At this time, Claremont took the you. villain on a new route by having him join the X Men, and soon they're assuming the role of headmaster of Xavier School for the Gifted. So again, a storyline straight from the comics. To commemorate the occasion, he sported a new look that showed off his ripped arms, an excessively large letter M on his chest, and the ensemble is complete with evening gloves that were fashionable for the time. The time. Uh, the time. And you know what happens? You <laughs> this need is to update the times. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then we get this odd scene that I didn't expect. This probably is from the comics, but I don't remember it. Rogue? Rogue has some kind of romance with Magni. Or now, now I'm starting to remember something about it. It seems like they've been in a romance yeah, together. Yeah, they've been in a, I had to look it up because I, I didn't know. Apparently, she absorbed the power of Polaris mm -hmm. and then allows her to touch, touch Magneto people. with, with – only Magneto they with – sex? They didn't imply all that. That you looked up. Oh uh, Yeah, I looked it up. Well, I mean, they implied in the show that they have been romantic. In a romantic, but not – if she can touch him, you can... She's been longing for a touch. Yeah. yeah because yeah. apparently... B Gambit, 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 Joe, how you feel about Gambit? Gambit is kind of a moron. One, no powdered sugar on the beignets. Two, doesn't realize they have inhibitor collars and they can get freaky if she puts one on. So all I'm saying is... It's right there. What the fuck? Your, he's like, he's like get these collars dumb. off us! As they're fighting, he's like, no, 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 save, save that collar! Yeah. Save that collar! Yeah. I want that one. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Wait, then, oh. then, I don't know if the writers know this, but uh, uh, Rogue says something extremely inappropriate to Magneto. Uh, yeah. Alex pointed it out, the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. She goes, oh, my God, you give me the heebie-jeebies or something like that. And if you know the context of heebie-jeebies, yeah, it, 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 it wasn't the original phrase wasn't meant to be racist, mm -hmm. but people have, been, have used it as a racist term yeah. for a little while. Against Jews. And Magneto is the most famous, uh, you know, one of the more powerful Jew uh, Jews uh, to have um, existed it's in the. It's kind of his whole thing, though. You know, surviving the Holocaust his is kind of trauma, yeah. definitely from that. But obviously, I don't think the writers knew that. I never associated <laughs> until you told me that. I didn't know. I use heebie-jeebies all the time, but I guess I should. Stop. I don't know. Anyway, so Rogue and Magneto have some kind of relationship, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna lead to drama with Gambit. And I like this. This interplay drama. They got drama. It's like a soap opera for kids, and it is. It now is. Adults. That's what happened with the Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. Gene. So uh, they show up to arrest Magneto, and the team does seem to stand by him, and uh, he. Actually, does some cool shit with helicopters. Like you can just, you can't take our guns away. And he's like, I'll just chop you up in little pieces with these helicopters. It's like, okay, fucking boss mode. Yeah, don't fuck fucking with Magneto. flamboyant Magneto is awesome. I love him so much. And but he does the right thing. He's like, you know what? So I don't think you're gonna give me a fair trial, but is will you trust me if I do this? And they're like, yeah. Well, if you get exonerated, yeah. So he voluntarily turns How himself. How convenient. I love, love the music here. Love it. It's just, it's great. Um, and then, so he goes on trial. And, and that was a comic storyline, the trial of Magneto. So, and we're kind of going through it. There was something with Scarlet, but it was not a very good story. So they're taking the best elements of things and moving it forward. Uh, Cyclops leaves Gene and Wolverine behind. That's the only part of the episode. I'm like, what? Is he's kind of a dick. Because, like, so they go to the trial of Magneto, but Wolverine doesn't get an invite, and he's, I guess Jean is at home. Well, she's, hey, yeah, look, she's a lot, lot well, of that pregnant. going around. She's real pregnant, yeah. So, I guess uh, that's why. Uh, he expected uh, Wolverine to drive her to the hospital if something happened, because that does exactly what happened. Anyways, the humans plan to sabotage uh, the with a attack. The protest, yeah. They, they got a gun. 
I don't know why they didn't think of this, you know, the people that hate mutants, but, you know, the writers thought of it. Let's take one of these collars, let's go beep, 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 and then inject the juices from the collar or the light from the collar into it. It's special magic juices. It's new technology. I got one shot. It's a cartoon. So so now every collar can be a gun, but they're not going to do that. This is a special gun. can only fire once. So Magneto gives a great speech. Yep. Loved it. And, um... This executioner character shows up. He puts on a bunch of armor, a bunch of mutant resistant things, and gets the gun and attacks. So we got an action scene here. And yeah, uh, this is great. Um, Rogue takes Cyclops to Jean. Another question mark there. It's like, bro, we're in the middle of battle. Do you think he learns from Jean that she's about to have a baby? And she's like, he's coming. And then Wolverine's like, whoa, yeah, who is that? <laughs> Apocalypse. It's like Wolverine is ready to do battle at all times. And then he, it's a funny little joke. They play off the fact that, you know, Wolverine is not necessarily. And then he goes, oh, you know, that I got to, I got to be the one to drive. Like, Let's go. Comedic moment. Mm-hmm. And he's driving he her. Put him on his own booster seat and he's fine. <laughs> there you go. He is pretty sure. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is where you get cameos. Gene different, contacts um... Cyclops that she's having a baby. And Cyclops is like, They're all right, I'm going to peace out of the battle. I'm like, bro, this. You're the leader. You stay here, and I think your wife he can cares deliver the more baby about without his son you. Son than those people, so it doesn't matter. Okay. To be fair, he did get his whoop ass whooped, and then he's like bleeding. He's yeah. not going to contribute much more, so he's like, I guess I'll peace out yeah. and go deliver the baby. Um, but yeah, pretty good climax because uh, human Magneto or uh, Magneto gets pretty sick of these humans. And he, like, makes a bunch of fucking swords and, like, slams it down. Uh, and they're, like, they're trying to kill him. They're, like, three inches from him while he's got his bubble well, and they're, they're shooting all these lasers. and everything exactly. already. Like, Plastic bullets. Fucking assholes deserve to be just killed by Magneto. But stays his hand. Storm helps electrify this. And they create, like, an electric fence. But in that chaos, a great scene, by the way, uh, the, the executioner shoots Magneto. Storm notices just in time, jumps in the way. Boom. Hit Storm. Her little uh, electric pin goes off, and mm. she is she's hurting. Depowered. Powerless. Depowered. Powerless. And Magneto sees this and gives another fucking awesome speech. And it's like, this is what we deserve for protecting you. You know, and, and it, you know, it seems like it's changing him. You know, he's trying to do the right thing. And over and over, these motherfuckers just, even when he plays by their rules, they're still getting fucked over. So he's like, fuck this. Well, they got, the, they got a, to- a taste of their own medicine, too, because they're like, uh, we're, they're going to come in and kill you guys, too. He's like, what do we do? He's oh, like, yeah. well, he gave the, the monster the trial. Yeah. It's like, how, it's funny, huh? How you play yeah. by the rules. They now still you know come after feels, you. you yeah. It was great. It was Love great. it. Satisfaction. Puts them all in a bubble, flies to space. Yeah. And you can even see that. I like the little extra detail of the breath. They at least acknowledge yeah. that we are in you know, upper atmosphere here. And he and says some cold shit. He's just like, he reminds them. It's like, at any given time, I can kill all of you, and I'm not, because I'm here. I'm on your side, but don't make me change my mind. Magneto's so fucking yes. boss here. He even puts his fucking boot over the guy's face. I can kill you. I can fucking smack you but easily. I won't. And he, um, you know, I felt that emotion in this moment, and he shows mercy once again. And he did for tear, I still don't too. trust him. He's Oops. doing he's... for his friend's sake. I like yeah. that. Yes. I like that idea like, mm, that it's he's... all it's all performative right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that they have a right to live in this world and try to make it a better place. He's trying to explain to these humans, you know, but he shows the stays their hand. But guess what? Gets a UN pardon. So Alex saying this is all <clears throat> a part of the plan. Yeah. Um, then we have the birth of Nathan Summers. Interesting scene here. One of the doctors is like, nah, I'm racist. Fuck you guys. I'm not going to deliver your baby. And then they're like, shit, what do we do? He's like, yeah. Uh, I mean, powers, he's just like, look, it, you when, you're, when you're giving birth, your powers could go off and kill everyone in the hospital. I can't. No, absolutely not. And uh, that's that's like, actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah, and motherfucker makes a good point. Uh, but there's no doctors in there that will... Uh, She's the most powerful telepath on Earth. Maybe it's a bad idea to have you, you be... Ne- a, you don't know. Yeah, I'm going to be reaching down in your nether regions to pull out a baby. Okay, and, so uh, this motherfucker's not a racist. He's a smart-ass man. Yeah, she's like, you no, put no, your no, hands no, down there? So, Rogue, who is super strength... Uh, saps his doctor knowledge Knowledge. and she becomes a doctor herself so she delivers the baby and resolves that little uh trauma and then yeah the effects Mm -hmm. then we get nathan summers 
and the effects of that gun appear to be permanent as Beast researches it, and it really affects Storm, and this is going to be a great character moment because Storm is so much about her powers, so interconnected with nature, and she feels completely disconnected, not only from nature, but also now her people, mm -hmm. her team, her friends. She fucking leaves. If Jubilee loses her powers, don't give a shit. Storm loses her powers. Look, you go from Omega <laughs> level Jubilee to zero, the nothing. Butt of all I was going to say, it was a big hit, but you took it further. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, who gives a shit? Boy. Now she has to buy spark like sparklers or glow sticks when she goes dancing. Yeah. Like, who cares? Damn, bro. Uh, I felt emotion here. I yeah, they... loved this episode. The storm stuff, well, the you... Magneto speeches, Scott even being a badass, and the team working together. Just fucking great. The beginning of the episode, There's a cliffhanger, too. too. And mm -hmm. a huge cliffhanger. That's right. Another Jean comes in, and she's like, I need the X-Men. Scott's like, who the fuck did I have sex with? And I made a baby with, and then they do it. And which one is the club? It's great. Nine. Wolverine's back there giggling like, yeah, like, yeah this is my chance. <laughs> this is my fucking chance. Yeah. Nine out of ten, guys. Fucking love this one. This one for me. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Well, yeah, higher. Eight. Eight for me. Yeah, eight, eight as well. Okay. Because uh, the other one uh, goes to... The, here yeah. we go. Episode three. Um... I don't know if I'll include this in the video. I don't know if there's the an embargo, embargo on episode today, three. Right? It ends today. It ends today. On episode three. Okay, we're going into episode three. You haven't seen it, so click off. Well, this we won't do. We, we can talk about the episode, maybe not do like breakdown. Okay, let's do a initial break. We're already in the spoilers, though. Oh, okay. So let's do an initial breakdown and then a quick spoiler. So this one is about what? It goes into depth about the two genes. Yes. Yeah. And like where they come from, and who's you know, the real one? What's yeah. the mystery? And by the end, we actually still we do know who the real one yeah. is. One the, is the, definitely a the dumb clone. genes. Like we don't know which. Sinestro. Like we know exactly which one is you because B says the science, and yeah. he told you. But <laughs> we don't know when she was switched. We don't know if Scott had sex with the one with that was the clone, and then the baby, and we, all this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The clone is the one that he had, had the baby, the baby yeah. with. But then what's that scene at the very end? Is like we don't know. The, the, the dumb, switched. the jump, dumb gene, because like Beast is like. No, no, no! You, you are the clone. It, oh, Dom Jim still thinks no. You, I could be anything. And he's okay, like, no, I did the carbon dating. Spoilers. You, you, you. That's whatever. Well, anyway, <laughs> so uh, we get an awesome, awesome transformation. She goes from you know being Jean, and then when she feels like she loses control of everything, and she's not who she the, thought she was, she turns into the Goblin Queen, the hottest mofo. <laughs> I've ever like, seen. If I was, she even loses if her I was, baby <laughs> way. She is looking good. Yeah, yeah, red hair, goth, uh, love fire it. mommy, and it's like, whoa. If love I was Scott, be like, All right, I'll save you, but keep the costume yeah. for later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying, I, I noticed you lost your costume. baby. It's called Jesus, Damn, guys. Scott is so fucking lucky. <laughs> Like, whoa, just, Jesus Christ. She's looking in the closet. What is this to here? I kept it for you. <laughs> <laughs> just That's the other Jean Grey. No, uh, it could be you. Um, but she turns into the Goblin Queen, and she's hot as fuck, and she is bad, mm. but a good kind of bad. And she becomes like a little lieutenant. Well, she gets awakened mm. by... Me, me what man. I like though is this turns into a horror film. Essentially. Yes, that's what and I love. We about have it. monsters, grossness. Fucking Gambit walks in in the middle of a um, menage a trois, but as they're fused, gross, literally fusing into Magneto. Literally gross. together. Yeah, they're like get out of here, swamp creature. It's yeah, like, the, oh. the mansion turns into like their worst fears. <laughs> yes. and... I found a real man. God damn, man. It's still why, in his head. Why, why, why I bet Wolverine you it's still and Gambit, head. the best ones that we like the most, always get the short end of the stick That's what here. happens, man. That's, that's, the only, happens. that's the only how high heat Wolverine damn. can reach. Uh, anyway, so the Goblin Queen, uh, they figure out what's going on. Nathan is abducted. Uh, Sinestro wants to, you know, uh, Mr. Sinister. create. Mr. Sinister, sorry, I keep calling him Sinestro. Uh, it creates a baby, invulnerable baby, and puts. Baby. Puts a baby in a cooker. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he puts, and it looks like a pressure cooker. I'm like, is he gonna cook that baby? <laughs> he, he cooks a baby. Yeah, the, uh, but uh, they stop him. It's it's following exactly the well, exactly what I remember of like the comic lines mm -hmm. where it's just like, hey, this is this baby has infinite potential. I'm gonna yeah. try to do some stuff to him. Gives him cable is eventually. 
uh, or this kid is eventually cable in the Techno future. Virus, yeah. uh, we learned that he's, uh, you know, is. Cyclops' son, but we don't know the details. This is going into all those details, and they managed to stop. Uh, so Jean Grey, the real one, even though she's in the hospital and she's hurt, she feels her husband is in danger. She fights in this awesome mind fight great episode they're doing crazy things with the animation with the animations limitations mm -hmm. they're they're exploring concepts and and going into the psyche loved it so a fight between the sexiest fuck gene and, and time the normal travel when time travel gene, used to be cool the redhead gene <laughs> and the phoenix gene and all the genes and it's just sweet oh my. Yeah. and um eventually she gets her to snap out of it. The little gem snaps, and the sexy as fuck Jean comes too. And I'm like, I want, I want that one. Yeah, that's and she's, in, she's in her costume. Like, <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> so they go in into Mr. Sinister's room and kick his ass and stop uh, the baby from being transformed. Baby starts coughing because there's like all this green mechanical bits on it that eventually will become metal. And I think. Uh, they have to send the baby to the future. So it's a touching scene. Bishop. Again, I'm feeling mm -hmm. emotion here that she doesn't want. And just, Scott's like, I cannot be a part of this. Yeah, I like I that. I just can't do this. It's, he walks away. And he walks away. He makes her do it alone. That's fucked up. It is fucked up, Scott. And we were just talking about you not being a bitch. Again, Cable's no. going to be mad in the future. And she, yeah. she does impart some memories on him <laughs> to try to make sure he remembers his family and stuff. So, Yeah, I, I could see him walking away because he's like, this is too hard. No, I'm not going to let him go. So he's like... If I leave, then that's a little it's bit of the, the uh, bitch coming back. Yeah, yeah it's like, mm. anyway. So then he goes to the future <laughs> with is... Bishop, and Bishop was left appropriately uh, from one of the previous storylines thirty years ago. And he was mm. like, "Is he ever going to find a way back into the future?" And uh, Beast does solve that. Goes into the future with the baby, where they can get him better, more advanced medical help, and he eventually becomes Cable. So that will maybe pay off in the future in the cartoon. So that's cool. Come full circle like yeah. that again. Yeah. And then at the very, very end, uh, well, no, before that, uh, uh, the I like I kind of skipped over it. Gene and Jean? Magneto in his oh. new threads goes up against you know the Goblin Queen Gene, and that's oh. cool. They f have a great fight there, and I'm like, yeah, Magneto, go go kick uh, Mr. Sinister's ass, and uh, but he actually mainly just fights uh, uh, Goblin Queen. And uh, yeah, and then she so she's has she's separating from the group and going off on her own. And what do they call her? What is her name? Fuck. Oh, she, at the she, end where she changes her she name? She has her own name. Yeah. I wrote it down. And then yeah. I don't know where I fucking put it. Uh, and I remember, I recognized that and name. Something. And something. I was like, oh, shit. That is, that, that's who that character was. There's a lot of things that I forgot from 30 years ago. Oh, so. yeah. It's been Pretty a while, cool. But... Pretty cool. And I really enjoyed this one. Um, then the end end scene, we get Dallas, Texas, an old hey, bar. That's yeah. right. And then Storm's walking in. She goes, sits down. She's looking at the weather. And then this mysterious guy comes in and says, hey, uh, pretty hot out here, huh? Wish somebody would make it rain. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. I could get your powers back. My name is Forge. Yeah, so Forge is pretty good with technology, and mm -hmm. I, that's comic accurate. He is going to eventually help yeah. her get her powers back. I was like, oh, back. yeah, sweet. I wonder who... I thought Bishop was meant... I thought the person is like, I know somebody who can help in the future. I thought that was Forge, but I guess Forge is already here, so he must have meant somebody else. And it might just be a generic unnamed person. Or maybe the person of the future came back already and Cable's already here. Or maybe Forge <gasps> was in the future and there's another Forge in the future. I don't know. Mm. Anyways, I thought Forge came from the future. Uh, so, yeah, and then uh, that, that episode concludes. Yep. Let me get uh, your scores. Nine. That's the one that goes yeah. to nine for you. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it was pretty sweet. I like the action. I like the horror. It was good. Yeah. And come on. That, that oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that gets an extra point for me. <laughs> yeah, nine. It's it's good it's good clean fun like this is yeah, a great yeah, this yeah. is like the perfect example of like really good quality Saturday morning cartoon stuff exactly yeah. when I saw this as a kid thirty years ago uh, then it would have given it a ten <laughs> ten out of ten it is a nine nine out of ten uh, love it and uh, good stuff. great good stuff. I am excited for additional episodes uh, there are eight more episodes Fire Made Flesh uh, Motendo. 
Part One, Remember Super It, Motendo, Motendo Part Two, uh, Bright Eyes, and Tolerance is Extinction, and that is a three-parter uh, uh, episode oh, there. Oh, oh. And actually, it's not even parts; it's just Tolerance is Extinction three times. So cool. Maybe they do an hour thirty minute like little mi mini movie there as they wrap up that that plot line. Yeah. So they already said there's season two. So who knows? Maybe Apocalypse can come back. Uh, he's not technically dead. He's trapped in some other kind of uh, dimension and uh, um, lots of back. other directions they can go. Magneto becoming a villain again, stuff like that. So yeah, he's still really great stuff. Suspicious, huh? He's still pretty suspicious. I'm just hoping that yeah. this is his, like, he's pretending to be a good guy, and he's like, I need the dumbest outfit possible. I pretend to be a good guy, and then I reveal that I'm a bad guy. The good red suit comes back out again. Yeah. And he's like, I was doing that as a joke, because, like, you know, I didn't really take myself seriously, so yeah. I wanted to make yeah. I looked dumb when I was good, is what Alex Good, good, good is dumb. It looked bad. It looked, <laughs> no, I still look bad back in That's a man with confidence, and he should have it, because he's a badass in this series. Yeah. Go watch it, guys. Thank you so much uh, for watching, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.